Hello and welcome to a new series of video on how to control and build something like that. Okay, what is that? Well, I want to use it in my teaching. Okay, I want to control the temperature of this element. That's it. That's the purpose. I want to make, you know, you a control with feedback. So we are measuring here. There is a, there is a sensor, yeah, a heat sensor down here. Yeah. And with this heat sensor, I'm measuring the heat of this device. Yeah. And I want to control there with these cables. There's a Peltier element inside. I want to control the temperature. And to, to control the temperature, I need on the other side, I need something where I can get rid of excessive temperature or which, which can take the heat. Yeah. Or the, simply some, some some heat sink yeah? and I have used a massive heat sink to be on the safe side with a with a fan on the back okay so that's the device let's see what is in there actually yeah I mean the, this part which is temperature controlled and the heat sink okay but what is in between in between is something like that yeah? that's a Peltier element yeah, it's a semiconductor element. It has two sides. Actually, two. It's flat. It has two major sides. Let's collect this. Of course, it has more sides than two. And we have connectors. Yeah. If we connect this, sorry. If we connect this here plus here minus, one side is getting cold and the other one side is getting warm. So temperature is transferred through this element. If I connect it the other way around. The hot and the cold side also changing sides. So if I adjust here, this is a 12 volt element. Okay, so it's designed for 12 volts. If I apply here 12 volts in this direction, this will get, I'm not sure if this is getting hot or cold. If I apply 12 volts in the other direction, this will be the opposite. Okay? And the other side is then also. Okay? So if this side is getting cold, this side is getting hot. If this side is getting cold, this side is getting hot. Peltier element. Yeah. Should not really be used for cooling or heating if there are other possibilities because the efficiency is rather low. Yeah. So this side is getting cold and this side is getting much, much warmer. Yeah. So there is not only the heat from here, there's also uh, you know losses and so on and the losses are quite high. However, I want to use this because it's rather simple. And I want, I'm not sure, really sure if this is allowed. However, I also want to control this with pulse width modulation. Okay. So I need something which is switching. And there I thought of this little device, this one, L293 motor driver, because for this, it is really not matter. It does not really matter if it drives a motor, if it drives like that. Yeah? And it can also exchange polarity. However, I then realized this little thing here, it's a little bit too small to, 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 to cope with the, with the, uh, power of this Peltier element. Okay. Little motor is fine, but the Peltier element is a little bit too much. So I went online and bought this. Okay. This is pretty much the same. You see, there is now also a heat sink and it's uh, simply more massive and so on. And we can apply here motor. You see here it's written motor. I'm not sure if you can read. Ah, he has written motor. So I will not apply the motor here. I will apply my belt element and then I can change directions voltage directions and I can also pulse with modulate this so I can select the power which is draining and here it is in one and in two and ground I can connect my Arduino huh? so what I need for my Arduino is turn left pulse with modulated turn right so this one means cool and the other one needs heat yeah pulse with modulation so I need two outputs and ground right so two outputs yeah then I realized hmm, yeah, I need some control elements. Okay? I need something to put in a set point. I need, I need simply something. So I wanted to use a display. All right? 
And I want to use this. This is a Arduino Nano. It has pretty much the same connectors as our, as the Arduino Uno, but in a smaller form factor. Yeah. So I want to use, I want, I need two pins here. I need a lot of pins here. And I also want to have buttons to enter something. Yeah. And there are no also need inputs. Yeah. And then I realized, this is not gonna work. Yeah. So I will also use this one. Yeah. Then at least, this is the shift register, then at least the outputs are no problem. But however, I'm not sure if I can manage somehow the display to the outputs. Uh, so I was very, I was very close to exchange this little thing here with that. Okay. Because there are a lot of out in and outputs. And then I thought to myself, hey, I mean, this is a small project. I cannot use an Arduino Mega for this small project. Who am I? And others do have had the same issues in the past. Yeah, there were things developed to overcome this. Bus systems. Yeah? So we heard about SPI bus, uh, I squared C bus and so on. Yeah? So maybe there are some possibilities. Yeah? So I will try. I will try still use to this yeah? because now I'm eager to know. I will still try to use this Arduino Nano. Yeah? So two outputs for that. This I will see. I think there are possibilities to, possibilities to, to use this with a bus system. Yeah? And then I want to use this thing here. Yeah? Keys, keyboard. Yeah? This is multiplexing. Also a technique on how to reduce in and outputs. Yeah? Multiplexing. And I shortly want to explain to you how this is working. You see? You do have here this keyboard. Yeah? It's also part of the of the Arduino package we have used in in, in, in our lessons. Yeah? And then you know, there are switches on. Yeah? It's a buttons. Yeah? And you see, there are only eight connectors. So how is this actually working? How is this actually working? I want to show you. Eh? So I want to simply draw this here. Eh? I want to draw the buttons. That's the keyboard. Here's button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, star, Hashtag A, B, C, D. Okay, this is, this is this device. And down here we have eight connectors. Yeah? So let, let me show you how those are interconnected. So here, the first one is going up and it's connecting this, this row. Yeah? The second one is connecting this row. The next one is connecting this row. And the last one, the fourth one, is connecting this row. Okay? And then we are starting with uh, with the other side. And I'm not entirely sure, I must say. However, I think they look like that. We are, we have this column, we have this column, we have this column, and we have this column. These are the, the eight connectors. All right. And what are the buttons now doing? The buttons are connecting those things to each other. Yeah? Or not. Usually they are not connected, and if we press, they are connected. Yeah? So here, these buttons are connecting those things to each other.
and how to get out which button I am currently pressing, which key I'm holding. The trick is that I put on here signal yeah, and I look at those four. So these are outputs for me, these are inputs for me. I put here one signal here yeah, and look if I get some, something back. Yeah. If I get something back, then it's either this key, this key, this key or this key. The others are not active because I'm not putting signals to the others. Yeah? And then I'm putting a signal one after the other and always look if I get, if I receive something back, if a button is pressed. Yeah? And so I can multiplex this. So I'm always looking, let's have a look at this row, 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 let's have a look at this row. And I'm always scrolling through the, the, the rows and see if a column gets active. Yeah. And so I need four outputs and four inputs and I have 16 keys. Yeah. So I only need eight, yeah, but I have 16 keys. That's good. Yeah. So this should save an amount of, of, of in and outputs. Yeah. And I'm going to put those outputs with the shift register. Yeah. And the inputs, well, I need to, to use directly. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to use. I want to realize, check if I can read in data from this keyboard. Huh? Let's see. Let's start with the, with the hardware setup. Okay. So I'm done with the hardware setup. Let's see what I've done. Here is my Arduino Nano. Okay, I have used here the shift register. Yeah? The outputs I have already wired to my keyboard here. Yeah? So here the, the outputs are to the left part yeah? and to the right part. I'm coming from there and I'm going into my, into my nano. Where have I skipped here to? Uh, because these are parts with modulation. Somewhere I need to get out for my cooling and heating. Yeah? And I decided to use these ones. Yeah? And the rest, here is the data line and the clock line and the, and the latch line, which control the shift register. So these three lines are for the shift register. The others are just power supply. All right. So shift register is now connected to pins 10, 11 and 12. The inputs from the keys are 2, 3, 4 and 7 and the outputs are at the shift register. I think that's it. What I'm going to add is some LEDs here to, to see if the shift register is working as I want. Okay, so I want to see this shifting through simply for debugging. Then I will put this away again. So now I should be able to read this in, I hope, if I code everything correct. Let's see. Okay, so I've spent some bucks and uh, used a thing which is called Visual Micro. Okay, Visual Micro for Visual Studio. Because I wanted to try to, to use, uh, to program my Arduino. Uh, my, my Arduino's uh, with Visual Studio to get benefits from this. I like it. Uh, auto, auto complete and so on. Ah. So I've installed this Visual Micro. I will now make a new project. A uh, simple empty project. This is good. After a while it looks like that. Okay. And since I am pretty sure I'm going to need uh, quite some, some coding, yeah, I will simply add here now already H files, uh, header files. 
So I will add here a header file, add new element. I will call this a header file and I want to call this uh, iopens. Okay, here I want to place in the number all my defines and so on, iopens.h. Here it is. Uh, so I will define what do I need? What do I need? Well, I need, of, of course, the pins, the latch pin. This was at 11. I was pretty, I was pretty close to what we have done in an Arduino. The latch pin, then the, the clock pin. This was 10. Yeah. And then there is the There is the data pin. This is this is for this is twelve. This is for the shift register. Okay, and then we have the inputs which are coming back from from the keyboard. Ah, uh, this was two. Where put put it? Two, three, four, and seven. Okay, so define row zero one pin and seven. Good. That's it. Uh, save this, and here I will include this. IOPIN.h. Here we have it already auto, auto complete and so on. Maybe I should make this a little bit bigger for you. Good. Uh, this I can delete. This I can delete. Here in setup, I will begin with serial for sure. I will begin with serial and I want to uh, yeah, the, the, the key modes. I need, the, I need the pin modes, of course. Yeah. I need, of course, the, of course, the pin modes. Here, these are... Let's do it like that. Looking good. So it's pin mode. Which, which pin? This one as an output, uh, an input, and I will use input pull up. Uh, talked about this, that this is not working at all. Uh, then we have two, three, four, good. I've made, I've made my own uh, I've made my own shifter object. All right. I will include this now. Add library. I will place this library down there. Yeah. User installed library. I will use the shifter here. Here it is. Shifter.h. What it can do is we can define a shifter. Yeah, this is the shift register. Yeah. So shift reg or how to call it? Also shifter. Shifter. Then I need to put in these things. Yeah. I need to tell this object where is the latch pin. I need to tell where is the clock pin. I need to tell where is the where is the data pin. Uh, and actually, that's it. This library also supports uh, multiple shifters. So I also have to give, I only have one shifters. Yeah? And there is auto, auto update. What is that? I will, I will show you afterwards. Yeah? So I have now, I have now put in this shifter. And actually, 
what is the first thing we want to have there? Since we are we are in pull up mode, input pull up, yeah, the shifter needs to pull down one row, yeah, one column. Shifter needs to pull down one column. So I call from shifter, yeah, clear bit, our clear bit number zero. Okay. Our set bit, bit number one. I will set bit uh, bit number two, and will set bit number three. And now it comes to these folds here. Uh, every time, if this is would be true, it would update the output every time I set something or clear something. But now here at the end. I call just shifter dot and transfer out. Then whatever I changed will be shifted to the output. All right. So this is what what this this object can handle. Yeah? You can tell what to change and then now put it to the output. So actually, actually. We should see this. If I plug this in here now, now we are getting really, really a lot of cables here. <laughs> Let's plug this in. Bing, bidi, bing. And now I press here upload, build and upload, then it takes a while. And actually what we should see is the our LED is here lit. Right. Yeah. So lit, 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 not lit. Bit number zero is, is not lit, this is low. This is good. This is good. Yeah. So this at least is working. All right. Uh, now I want to yeah, I simply want to 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 read out yeah i simply want to shift this yeah so i will i will have a char and i will get key i will make a get key function and this get key function uh, should know which row is asking yeah so static unsigned Byte row is zero. Answer row is zero. Then we have static. Uh, let's have to, let's have this. Uh, then uh, int column shall be minus one. And I'm going to read in, yeah. And since I'm pull up, I will simply write digital read. Digital read and which pin number? Pin number row one. Then columns column is zero. Okay. Row number two column. If we are at three, it's two. And if we read something at four, yeah, then we get it from three. Yeah. And now if column 
uh, create or equal zero because if it's no longer zero, then we have received, some, uh, received something. Uh, we will. Hmm, how do I do this? I only want to have this once. So I will also remember if there is already a button pressed. Because I want to only want to have this once, yeah? Futon, futon, it's the button which is pressed. Okay. Then I can write here smaller than zero. If it's more than zero, then the button pressed is false. That's for sure. Right. Else. If we received something, yeah, if the button is not pressed, button is not pressed, then I remember that the button is pressed. This is good. Yeah. And I will set a character. Key. This is the return value. Okay, and I need somewhere, I need a character, a character array. I call this, I call this button four by four. And this is first it's one, then two, C and D. And I will simply say the key is the key is default it's zero and key equals a button and its row and color. This is good. This is cool. And in the end I have to return the key. Good. Then uh, the only thing which is left is I have to switch further. I have to switch further. So I will use the shifter set bit row bit zero will be set now. Yeah. This was here what originally I clear bit. Now all bits are set. I should not receive anything now. And then I will ask if row is greater or equal than three, yeah? then row shall be zero. Otherwise, row shall be increased by one. Yeah? So now row is growing until it's three, then it's getting zero and then it's growing again. Yeah? And we will now shift a clear bit. We will clear this now. Whew, okay, this is good. I think this is good. The only thing I have to do is to call to call uh, This is good, unsigned byte, there's no unsigned byte, there's only a byte. To call this in my loop. Yeah? 
in my loop, I can write if a uh, get key. Well, what was the name? <laughs> what was the name? Hey, what was the name? Get key. I'll write this in big letters because then I will stick to my own rule that the functions are big. Get key. Huh? If this is uh, if this is other other than something else than zero, I will make a print. Zero print. Key. Huh? I'll make this char key make it like this. If this if there is a key, then print this key. delay 100 milliseconds that we can see this switching through. Poo, let's upload. Let's see what this is doing. It's compiling, it's uploading. What do we've got? Nothing is changing. Ooh, of course. Of course, I also have to call this shifter transfer out. Yeah? I also have to call the shifter transfer out. What was this? This was wrong. Because otherwise I can set and things, set and delete. Uh, Bits I will not see it on the output. Let's see if this is now working better. Aha, at least it's it seems to move there. Okay, this is good. This is good. What is on serial monitor? Press now star. Ooh, star! But it's not ending. Eight, eight, three. Okay, something is working. However, I would I would expect I would expect that this is not repeated. Why is that? I read in something. The button is getting pressed. I switch to the next column, to the next row. Switch to the next row, and then no button is pressed. Aha! Of course, because I'm switching to the next row, this button pressed will get deleted. And whenever I switch back to the first row, it's new, eh? because it was not seen the last rows. So whenever the button is pressed, I'm not switching rows. This is good. I'm not switching rows, so I only do this if there is not button pressed. Eh? Then I'm switching those rows. Eh? If a button is pressed, I will stay at the same row and wait until this button is released. Upload! Let's see. Nothing is working.
But something is working. <laughs> something is working. Look at that. Yeah. If I press a button here, it's at zero. It stops. Yeah. It, at the lowest line. If I press this, it stops at this line. So this is working. It's no longer moving. But it's not... <laughs> mm. It's not printing. Why is it not printing? Ah, so auto scroll. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah, one. Yeah, two. Yeah, three. Yeah, now it only is one time. Okay, and I only want to be a little bit faster. You know, I only want it to be faster. So well, simply because the delay is too much. Yeah? If the delay is higher, yeah, then I probably will not see. I probably will not see this here. Yeah? This will just flicker, I guess. Yes, but it should be rather fast. One, four, five, six, D. This is good. All right. So with this program, uh, I really don't like this delay because you know it is a control. It will be a controller, and the delay in a control is always bad, no matter how short. This is absolutely not necessary. So what to do? I also made a, a library called timeout. Okay. I also made a, this uh, timeout and I will add this timeout now. Yeah? So there is a timeout. Read next key. Or is there a more reasonable name? I'll call it button check. Because I'm not I am not sure if the if the if the key yeah? and this I want to do every ten microseconds. I can do it like this. Yeah. If and now this has a function button check punct timed out. Yeah. If this is timed out, I will do this, I perform this. Okay, so this this timeout, this is, you know, it's just, it's stored in the milliseconds, yeah? whenever it was produced, or if I'm calling this button check, set now. Yeah? Now it's stored in the milliseconds, and here it only checks if the milliseconds are over. So this encapsules somehow this storing milliseconds and so on. This is a small, I will also have it for download down uh, below the video. This little timeout library. Okay. Button check. There would be also the possibility of dot set timeout. Then I could give a new value. Yeah? But I only, only want to I only want to have it always 10 milliseconds, so I just can call set now. Yeah? And this delay I can remove. And now it only checks after 10 milliseconds, however it has time in between. Let's see if this is still working. flashing yes
Good. So, I've wasted now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. Uh, I've wasted now seven pins and I read in 16. That's good. Uh, and now I will have a look on how to put this thing, introduce this thing here, uh, that we can write something out there. Okay? With the help of of some function, of some bus system. I squared C, SPI, I'm not sure. Our unit can do both. Good, yeah. For this time, I would say that's enough. Yeah? So first step in producing this control with input check. Input check. Huh? Next time we will try to add a LCD display to write something out. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.